guy that works in on bikes all the time and rides a bike because I like to ride a bike. And I guess I'm, I have a family, so I guess I'm a dad now. So that's a that's a good one. But I'm a guy that just is trying to uh, make himself heard, I guess, to the world, so people can maybe learn from my mistakes that I've had in the past. I've always had a passion for bikes, to ride bikes when I was younger. And when I actually moved to Baltimore in my teenage years, I found a local riding spot on mountain bike trails and started having issues with my bike back there. So I came down to the bike shop to have it fixed and started being the guy that hung out at the shop. And they called me the grommet because I was kind of like the shop rat that just sat here and hung around and wanted to learn and whatever, you know, trying to be, I guess, a part of something, maybe, I don't know. One day they offered me a job and I've been working in shops since. Trials actually kind of happened on accident. Back in the day, I used to ride BMX a lot and a friend of mine got into trials and I used to see him in Towson riding all the time and when I'd go ride my BMX at night, he would be out there riding with friends and I'd kind of hang out with him a little bit, kind of tease him, like he'd go onto his rear wheel onto a ledge and I'd be like, oh, I can do that on my BMX bike and jump around and he wouldn't think it's funny. And then one day I'm here at work and a friend of mine that I used to ride BMX with won a race and he won a free trials bike and traded it in here at the shop for a BMX bike to give to his neighbor's kid that had no bike because he had no use for it. So we had like pretty much a brand new trials bike here that we were jumping around on. So I decided to buy it and I called up my friend that rode trials. I was like, look, dude, I, I just got a new trials bike. He's like, no, you didn't shut up. Why are you teasing me? Because I always tease him. I finally convinced him and he came down to the shop. He's like, holy crap, you're serious. So I started riding from then. That's how I got into trials, like it wasn't planned at all. Trials is a form of riding that is the most technical form. So if you know what a track stand is, which is where you get to a traffic light and cyclists will sit there and they'll just balance at one spot and not even move, staying on their bike. That's kind of part of trials where a lot of it's real controlled, slow balance stuff where you do balance lines, you ride over obstacles on a bike, you keep your feet on the bike the whole time, you don't put your feet down and hop around and jump off of stuff and climb over things and do all the craziness that most people think shouldn't be done on a bike. BMX is more trick oriented, uh, faster paced where you're kind of rolling and stuff. BMX you'll have a ramp or a dirt jump where you're kind of jumping off of something and landing on like a transition and you'll do tricks where it be a you know, bar spin or 360 or 180 or backflip or anything, tail whips. I mean everyone's seen some form of BMX where Guys are just doing crazy stuff over jumps and down handrails and trials is more of going over obstacles, figuring out the smoothest, easiest way to, to get over like big rocks.
Trials, uh, you got a pedal kick, which is basically hopping around on your back wheel across things or a gap. Side hop, which is kind of being parallel to a ledge or rock or whatever log and jumping vertically and sideways onto it. Wheel switches where you get your front wheel on something and then jump up to your back wheel. I learned how to fall at a young age riding bikes. That happens, you're gonna fall. Like I rode last night, I fell. I mean, I got my shins are all cut up with it, so it's just the way it goes. I guess the main thing is knowing how to crash without breaking an arm or a finger. You just have to kind of know almost how to like tuck and roll and get away from the bike. Ow. Uh, knock on wood, one, I broke my kneecap, dirt jumping, riding my BMX bike. It was a set of jumps that were kind of as a rhythm set where the first one was straight, the second one was to the right, the third one was to the left. And I went off the first one a little crooked and hit the second one and was not going towards the downside of the second one. And I was going straight out, so I threw the bike and landed on my knee on some rocks. So I didn't ride my bike for three months. I walked around with a golf club as a cane. And when I did start riding again, I couldn't actually pedal through the pedal stroke. I had to kind of take my foot off at certain points. Doctors wanted to drain. It was all puffed up and fluidy. They wanted to drain it. And they said they could do some surgery to repair it, but it would probably be worse off afterwards. So I just suffered through it. It still hurts me every once in a while, but for the most part. I did break my tailbone, I guess. That was another one. <laughs> 2004. I was working at Toyota as a technician and working under cars a lot. You know, it's not the brightest area because all the lights are above the car. So, you know, trying to reach up and see things and get in like tight spaces, I was having a hard time seeing. My family's all had glasses and I was the only one that had 2020 at the time. I was like, oh man, I guess maybe I need glasses. So I went to the eye doctor and they looked in my eyes and were like, you have a more serious problem. You need to go see a retina specialist right now. And they were like, we're gonna make an appointment for you. For you. you need to go. I don't want you. They were like, you promised me. Don't, don't say you're gonna go and just blow it off. They're like, seriously, I'll make an appointment for you tomorrow. You'll, you have to go. And they're like, you're probably gonna need surgery. So that scared the crap out of me. It scared me enough where I was like, I guess I'm going to the doctor. And so I went and they said, you have diabetic retinopathy after hours of going through tests and stuff. They said I had a pretty severe case where I have to go through a bunch of surgeries. I'd probably lose my vision, but if I didn't do anything at all, within five to 10 years, I'd be totally blind. And they said they might be able to save my vision enough where I could see something, but it would take lots of surgeries and lots of other things I'd have to change as far as like my diet with how I ate and took care of myself having diabetes. I got diabetes basically Christmas Day in 1989. That was a fun Christmas. I ate a whole lot, I drank a whole lot, I went to the bathroom a lot. I was nine years old so you know, it's just not acting normal. Like, I wanted sugar all the time, which is kind of weird, but I was just, like, eating, like, the sweetest things I could find. And I, apparently I was real pale and, like, flushed and literally going to the bathroom, like, every 10 minutes and drinking gallons of water. So they went to have me tested. No one knew I had diabetes from my family because no one else had it. So then when we got to the hospital, they did some tests, and my blood sugar was real high and they said I had diabetes, so I had to stay a week in the hospital while I learned how to, I guess, take shots and everything since I was nine, and then my family had to learn how to deal with the, the complications and having to take care of me and what to do. Ever since then, I've been doing shots and everything else, and then, so I guess at that point, I was, what is that, 14, 15 years in is when I started losing my vision.
guess basically diabetic retinopathy is where blood vessels that shouldn't be growing in your eyes grow around the retina to block it and what happens is they start pulling on it so you're constantly doing laser eye surgery to kind of kill those blood vessels off after a little while blood vessels start growing back so they do the laser again but at this time now you have like a, a saline which is basically salt water that your body produces anyways and sometimes it'll absorb back in because even like this pinhead drop of blood will blur your vision so sometimes that'll reabsorb and sometimes it doesn't in my situation most of the time it didn't so then they do another surgery clean it out I'd be able to see for a little while and then they then it would bleed again and then do another surgery after a while so and they do this with both eyes. Um, had a partial detached retina in this eye on my left that they reattached, but for a while I couldn't see out of like the bottom corner. And then this eye had a worse detached retina where I can't couldn't see on the inside corner. And after a while of going through 22 eye surgeries in a two year span, they decided, you know, let's put a silicone oil in there that'll stop the blood vessels from growing and but it's like looking through a bottle of olive oil and if any blood does bleed it'll push it to the top of the eye so it'll be out of your line of sight by the time they did that this eye had detached the retina had detached pretty bad so now I can't see but like the teeniest little sliver out of the top corner but basically it's like totally black like that you know and then this side, they have the silicone oil still in this side, not in this side anymore. And th so I'm looking through oil. I haven't had a surgery in a while, but they want to do another surgery soon. I've been putting it off because I don't want to do another surgery, but they're going to keep the oil in there. And because of the oil, I can see light. So like the window over there, I can see the, the lights above, above us. I can see, I can't see you sitting there. I can't see anything on this counter. But the, you know, the light is what I can see, which I'm happy for because I can see if it's daylight. I can see the blue sky. I can see the green grass. But only if it's like big, big areas. I basically didn't ride my bike for two years. Moping, depressed, sitting around the house, bored, wanting to ride. I mean, like, there was like a late 2005 or mid 2005, there was a uh, like a bike tour thing where they came down into the city and they had trials riders and like BMXers all doing like this big show and all my friends called me up like we're going to this and I was like I can't see like my vision's because my vision was on and off like I could see sometimes like really good and then sometimes I couldn't and this happened on one of those times that I just it was horrible I like pretty much it was I could I can see better now than I could at that time and that's not saying much but I was like I can't it's just pointless so and they're like all right well we're going I was like so that just put me in a deep depression like I couldn't I was like I can't even do anything I can't ride I can't even go check out riding I can't do anything so I sat around watched TV I wasn't working at the time I didn't do anything I couldn't even get around at the time I didn't have a cane or anything um, but you know I would kind of dig through my CDs and the only way I could figure out which was what while my wife was working was to um, pull a CD out, put it in a CD player, hit play and go, oh, that's not what I was looking for. Going through hundreds of CDs trying to find a, some music, you know, was this was before I even had a computer I could use. Um, you know, just doing all that. So that sucked up a lot of time out of the day, listening to television, doing all that stuff. And it was pretty, pretty boring. Couldn't go anywhere, couldn't do anything. At, at that point where I was, I couldn't see. It's like it's impossible to ride a bike without being able to see. I can barely walk, you know, without assistance. So, how am I going to ride a bike, you know? 
So pretty much I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm done. I got to figure out what else I'm going to do with my life. And the doctor basically said, you're not allowed to get your heart rate up. I don't want you shaking around because you know, that would disrupt and get blood vessels bleeding. So he basically said, you can't do much. So I stopped riding my bike for two years. Once I got the silicone oil in, I got to go ahead to do some light stuff, like not too much. And I was like, well, I ride a bike this way where I jump over stuff. And he's like, you can do a little bit, but just keep it minimal. So in 2006 is when I got back on my bike and started trying to figure it out. A lot of people told me that I couldn't ride, so I started to believe them. You know, I uh, always wanted to ride, but, you know, I guess at, at the point it was me talking to friends that rode and me going, I can't ride, you know, and me realizing I couldn't ride. I would go to the basement where all my bikes were and just sit on them, and, you know, that made my depression worse, where I'd just sit on my bike and remember, like, all the stuff, like dirt jumping, riding my BMX bike, or just on my trials bike, and just looking at them, touching them, like, man, I miss this, you know. Wasn't working on bikes at the time, I wasn't even going around my bikes for the most part, so every once in a while I'd get down there and play with them. And one day I was like, you know what? I can do this. I was like, I should pick out my trials bike, because I don't actually have to roll anywhere, I can do a lot of balance stuff. And I was like, balancing's easy. I, you know, there's no effort involved. I can just sit there and, you know, balance and whatever. So I grabbed my bike, Went out to the uh, front of my house to the curb midday during the week when no one was around and wasn't worried about hitting a car. Jumped on my bike, tried to balance, and it didn't work. I was like, okay, try that again. I was like, I'm just rusty. Quickly realized you need vision to balance. Like, you know, you need sense of touch that balance the ear thing, and you need some vision to see. So you can kind of tell if you're leaning, because it's a little hard to tell if you, you're not used to correcting when you can't see. And, you know, I was a fresh, non-sighted person, basically. So I stumbled walking around the house. So I grabbed the bike and went back inside, pretty depressed, put it in the basement. I was like, I guess I'm not going to ride a bike if I can't even balance. I was thinking trials was the easiest one, because I didn't have to roll anywhere. Next day, I was like, you know what, screw this, I'm going to figure it out. So I grab my bike, this time I just sit in front of my television listening to the television, and I just practice getting on and off my bike trying to get that balance, and slowly it started happening, where I started balancing. By the end of the day, I could do a track stand balancing in one spot, you know, not for a long time, but pretty long, you know, and not jumping out of control, trying to save it. So then it progressed from that to another day I went outside and started just trying to get up the curb and over the curb and then the next challenge was figuring out getting on the rear wheel and then trying to figure out how to get on the rear wheel and figure out where I want to put my rear wheel. So like if I get on the rear wheel and there's a curb here, how do I get from where I'm at to the curb on my rear wheel when I can't see it, you know, trying to figure out distance. So then I had to figure out distance, and then if, once I got on the curve, I had to figure out how to get over the grass to the sidewalk without seeing it. So that way, you know, I set little goals for myself. And once I started getting all that, and balance was good, and jumping around was good, I was getting pretty bored jumping around on a curve. So I called up my friend who got me into trials, and it's like, hey man, you want to go ride? He's like, can you see again? I was like, no, I still can't see. He's like, I was like, come on, let's go out. And he's like, okay. I was like, I'll bring my bike. I just want to go out and hang out. So I get out there, you know, he helps me get to somewhere. And we're just messing around and I'm jumping all around. He's like, holy crap, how are you doing that? And I was like, I've been practicing. I've had a lot of time. So I stunned him and stunned other people. My friend Bill, who I ride with pretty much all the time, he's at the beginner level of riding and I basically teach him how to ride or give him techniques. For instance, like when I met him, he couldn't 
put his front wheel up on anything, like even a ledge, or he could track stand pretty well, but he couldn't just put his front wheel up on something or get onto his bash ring to get onto something. So I had to kind of show him by me doing it, and then when he would get to a certain point, I could get close enough where, like I could touch him, like where he was like, he could balance with his front wheel on something, and he could sit there and he wouldn't be able to figure out what he what to do next and I could go over there and see where his foot was and go okay your pedal's too high up you need to level your pedals out because he'd be at like instead of three and nine he'd be closer to eleven and five and so I could give him that advice and then like if he was leaning too far to the left or to the right or whatever most people think oh start pulling the bike over or put your shoulders into it or just like throw all your weight over I could tell him, you know, don't do that. Just use your hips a little bit because that will move everything. If you just move your hips over a little bit, that will keep you from falling. Just like little things like that that I've figured out how to do in the past. It helped me explain things to people who couldn't kind of figure it out on their own. I did the Cub Scouts last weekend. So this was Cub Scouts camp out thing. The Cub Scouts and 90% of the parents, or 95% of the parents, had no clue that I couldn't see because the people who had hired me to come out, I told them just to keep it quiet because I had a plan. I jumped in, started jumping around on the ground on my back wheel and doing some front wheel hops and they started going crazy. So then at that moment I paused and I got up on one of my boxes and just sat there and I was like, all right, so there's two things missing from this. and. See if you can figure it out. And I was like, one's on my bike and one's on me. And so all the kids yell, of course, you're missing your seat because Charles bikes typically don't have seats. So and I was like, all right, so what am I missing from me? And some of them yelled knee pads, elbow pads. One of them yelled your underwear. I was like, no. And then a parent that I believe knew I couldn't see was like, your sight. So I was like, anyone else want to answer that? And no one said anything so I grabbed my cane that was folded up and hidden out and I was like I can't see and I they were just like I knew the parents were shocked the kids were like I don't believe you, you how do you do it and I was like well I'm gonna explain that to you and I went through my story how I lost my vision and everything and how it was all diabetes related and then it's like so how many of you kids thought you couldn't do your homework because it was too hard or you couldn't get a, a merit badge because it was too hard or had anyone tell you it was too hard and it's like clap if that's true and so pretty much everyone clapped and I was like well that's what I deal with all the time people tell me what I can't do versus what I could and riding a bike was one of the big things they told me I couldn't do I went through like a rehab thing where I had already put out a, a riding video my first riding video was out on YouTube and they they guided me and held my hand a lot very careful that I didn't hurt myself and I was, kept telling them I'm good I got it I'm figure it out and you know I don't need the help I ride a bike and do all this stuff and they're like no you don't you ride with someone like on the back of a tandem and I was like no I ride a bike I jump off of stuff and they're like no you don't you can't do that people who can't see can't do that just even before that I had people telling me what I couldn't do not so many people telling me that I could do stuff and then I've showed these people that I did it and they were amazed they're like if you can do that you can do anything I was like that's what I've been trying to tell you guys like that's not holding me back so then at the end of the demo I did my whole show and then I was like all right so if people tell you you can't do something because it's too hard do you believe them and then everyone started yelling no so that was a pretty cool demo It's kind of a loaded question, I guess. Um, I'd like to see because I miss certain things like driving, getting around where I want to go instead of dealing with other people or service to drive me places. I'd like to see because I miss dirt jumping and riding my BMX bike. 
But at the same time, if I had never lost my sight, I wouldn't be going on the road that I'm going on where, you know, I can talk to people, do shows in front of people and have them listen to what I have to say versus doing a show in front of people just so they can watch someone do a bunch of cool stuff. So, I mean, I guess overall, like, the way it's going right now, I'd probably say I'd rather not be able to see. If it wasn't going the direction where I'm trying to do shows and motivate people, uh, I'd say I'd want to see. So I guess it's, I guess at this point, like, I've known a lot of people who have been, had pretty good opportunities that have kind of just thrown them away in the past, and they've regretted it. I guess I put a video out originally to prove to other trials writers that I rode still. Some of them babied me a little bit on, on the internet, thinking like, oh, he can't see, he's just hanging out to be a part. And I was like, look, I ride a bike, trust me. And it wasn't that I ride better or anything, it was more like just saying I do more than jumping on and off of a curb. Jump off of stuff that's shoulder high and everything. So I put that video out and people were like, you need to spread this around everywhere. People need to see this. And that's kind of what started pushing me towards getting myself out there and doing you know, then that kind of grew into motivational speaking. So if I wasn't going down that path, I definitely want to see, but now that I'm going down that path, I think it's better that I, I can't see, because not that many people would want to listen to me or hear what I have to say if I was just another guy with no issues, really. I want people to know that anything's possible. I mean, a lot of odds are put up against stacked against people. A lot of things that people think they can't do and it's all because they think it. They don't, they don't, a lot of people don't even try to do anything anymore because they start thinking in their head like the consequences, you know, like, well if this happens then that won't be good, but it's that saying, you know, you gotta take chances in life and if you don't take a chance you'll never know, so. You may fail, it, you know, it might not work out for you. And I've been through a lot of that where things didn't work out. But if you're given an opportunity or have the ability to do something, it may be scary, but you gotta try it. I mean, it's like when I ride a bike, a lot of things are scary. Like if I was on this counter here and jumping down to the ground, you know, three or four feet, I used to be terrified of that. Yeah. And, you know, it just took a little bit of time to figure out that I could do it, but I didn't just, if I had thought to myself, I could get hurt or I can't do this or whatever, why even try, then I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. So it, it all goes into everyday life. Something's scary and you think maybe I shouldn't do this or I can't do it because it could change my life and maybe people are scared of success and maybe people are scared of failure. You know how many times I've jumped off of stuff and failed? <laughs> it's bad but I got right back up and did it. I mean, I fall in demos all the time, but I can't lie there and go, okay, I fell, sorry guys, I'm done. But you just gotta get back up and try it again. But if you're scared to try again, you'll never, uh, never get through life happy.